maximize f, which is equal to 4x minus y plus 5z, subject to the constraints x plus y plus z is equal to 7, 3x plus 4y plus 6z is less than or equal to 36, 6x minus y minus 15z is less than or equal to 0, and x, y, and z are all greater than or equal to 0. Well, it's a linear optimization problem because I've got a linear function to find the maximum of and all these linear inequalities. So what I need to do is find the convex set that all those inequalities define and find the vertices of the convex set and then I figure out what f is at each of the vertices and whichever is the maximum value I get from that is the maximum value of f. Now if I just had x and y, I'd draw it but I've got x, y, and z, so I can't really draw a useful picture of it. So what I'm going to have to do is use slack variables. And to do that, I'm going to need to write down my inequalities and add slack variables to them. So my inequalities are x plus y plus z is equal to 7, 3x plus 4y plus 6z is less than or equal to 36, and 6x minus y minus 15z is less than or equal to 0. Okay, so now I need to add slack variables. So first I should check to see if all the inequalities have a less than or equal to sign, and they do, because if they had a greater than or equal to sign, I would have had to multiply by minus 1 so that they point in the right direction. And now I can add my slack variables. So the first one is actually an equation and doesn't need any slack variables. So that's good, but I will just move the equal to 7 over to give me space to put my slack variables in. And I'll move these over as well. And they'll become equals 36 and equals 0. And I'll add a slack variable to this one and a slack variable to this one. Okay, so I'll just put in an extra line above that. Add slack variables s1 and s2 which are greater than or equal to 0 so that we have those equations there. Okay, so I've added my slack variables. What do I do now? Well now I'd have to put them in a matrix and do various row operations to find the vertices. So I can make my matrix 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 7, 3, 4, 6, 1, 0, 36, 6, minus 1, minus 15, 0, 1, 0. So that's the matrix that I need to do row operations on. So it's got three rows, so what I'll need to do is find three columns in which to form identity matrix columns. And I'd need to do every possible combination of three columns. Uh, and so I should make a list so that I don't miss any and so that I don't do any of them more than once. So I'll need a new page for my list. So I've got a column for X, Y, Z, S1 and S2. Well, how many combinations am I going to get? So, number of combinations is equal to, well, I've got five columns, and I need to choose three of them, so that would be five, choose three, which is equal to one times two times three on the bottom, and 5 times 4 times 3 on the top, so 10. So I should have 10 combinations. Okay, so there's my table in which I'm going to put the various combinations. So let's see. I could have X and Y and Z, and X and Y and S1, X and Y and S2, that's all the ones with X and Y, X and Z and S1, X and Z and S2, X and, oh, that covers all the ones with X and Z, 
x at s1 and s2. So that's all the ones with x, so we'll do the rest of the ones with y. y and z and s1, y and z and s2. That's just all the ones with y and z. y and s1 and s2. That covers all the ones with y, and that leaves z and s1 and s2. So they're all the combinations of columns I need to put identity matrices in. Now that's a lot, so I think I might use MATLAB to help me do it. Here's MATLAB. Let's put my matrix in. A equals 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, and the answer is 7. 3, 4, 6, 1, 0, and the answer is 36. 6, minus 1, minus 15, 0, 1, and the answer is 0. So now what I need to do is do all those 10 combinations of three columns to produce an identity matrix. So let's have a look at what we do have. We've got a pair of columns here that are already the end of an identity matrix. So I just need one more column. So if I put the column here, say, um, to produce the first column of the identity here, I need a 1 in this position and zeros below it. So I just need to pivot on that 1 there. So we say A is pivot A at position 1, 3, because that's the position we are at. And we get this answer here. So here's my identity matrix, and here's the answers. So we get Z is 7, S1 is minus 6, and S2 is 105. Z is 7, S1 is minus 6, and S2 is 105. And the other two we make 0. OK, so let's have a look. Well, why don't we just keep going with keeping these two as they are and put an identity matrix in column in this column. So we would need to pivot just there. So again, A is pivot A, uh, 1, 2. So here's my identity matrix, and here's the answers. So I get Y is 7, S1 is 8, and S2 is 7. Y is 7, S1 is 8, and S2 is 7. And the other two are 0. OK, back to MATLAB. So let's keep these two. And this time we'll put our identity column here. So we need a 1 in this spot and zeros below it. So we pivot on 1, 1. So A is equal to pivot A, 1, 1. So let's have a look. There's my identity matrix, there's my answers, X is 7, S1 is 15, and S2 is minus 42. X is 7, S1 was 15, and S2 was minus 42. And the other two are zero. We're back to MATLAB. All right, what are we going to do next? Well, why don't I just keep two of the columns I've got, this column and maybe this column, and get a third column of the, column of the identity somewhere else. So how about here? So that would mean I'd need a one in this position because I need a zero zero one. So let's pivot on three one. A is equal to pivot A, 3, 2, sorry. OK, so here's our three identity matrix columns. And here's the answers. So we get X is 1, Y is 6, and S1 is 9. X 
is 1 y is 6 and s1 is 9 and the other two are 0 back to MATLAB let's keep these two and work on the others I would like to put an identity column here but in order to do that I would need to put a 1 here and there's a 0 there I can't put a 1 there by swapping uh, rows or anything like that I'm not going to be able to produce an identity matrix there because there's a row of zeros in that matrix so it's not possible to do X Y and Z so we'll just go and cross that one out in our list X Y and Z is not possible back to MATLAB and have a look keep these two We've already dealt with that one so we would need to put an identity matrix column there and it would be the middle column of the identity so we want to put a one there so that's row two position one two three four five a equals pivot a two five and here's our answer so there's one column two columns and three columns and there's our answer so we get X is minus 8 Y is 15 and S2 is 63 minus 8 15 63 and the other two are 0 now we just did X and Y and S2 uh, so it looks like this is the best one to go to because it's just the Z that's different and we can keep the X and the S2 so let's go back to MATLAB so we'll keep the X and the S2 and we'll try and do Z so we would need the third column of the identity because I've already got column 1 and column 2 so we would need to pivot just here so that would be row 3 position 3 A is equal to pivot A row 3 position 3 and we get this answer and so we've got first column second column third column and the answers so we get X is 2 Z is 5 and S2 is 63 2, 5, 63 2 5 63 and the other two are 0 alright well I reckon we should try and do the last one that has an um, X so we should try and do this one so X, Z and S1 so we would be trying to do X Z and S1 and that would mean we'd need a 1 there so that's pivot 2, 4 A is pivot A, 2, 4 and here's our answer there's my three identity columns and there's my answers so X is 5 Z is 2 and S1 is 9 5 2 9 and the other two are 0 okay what have we got left we've got um, this one and this one well we just did 5 2 9 so we had a Z and an S1 and this one's got a Z and an S1 so let's do this one next Y, Z and S1 so having a look we want Y, Z and S1 we've already got column 2 and column 3 so we'd want column 1 of the identity so we pivot on 1, 2 A is pivot A, 1, 2 okay three columns of the identity there and answers there Y is 
z is minus 0 0.5 and s1 is 9. 7.5 minus 0 0.5 9. And that means there's one left. We want y, z and s2. We want y and z and s2. We need the second column of the identity, so we need a 1 here. So we pivot um, at 2, 5. a is pivot a to 5. So two columns here, one column here, answers here. y is 3, z is 4, and s2 is 63. 3, 4, 63. 3, 4, 63. And the other ones are 0. So we found all of our basic solutions now. We don't need MATLAB anymore. So let's find the feasible ones. The ones with negatives are infeasible. So the feasible ones are this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So let's just say underneath. The feasible solutions are marked with a star. So five feasible solutions. We just need to sub all the different values um, of x, y, and z from those solutions into my f. So what I'll do is I'll transfer all of those onto the next page as vertices. So we just need the first three to make a vertex, because remember we added S1 and S2, so it's these three that we're interested in. So the vertices are 1, 6, 0, 5, 0, 2, 2, 0, 5, 7, 0, 0, 3, 4, and 0, 7, 0. Alright, well we just need to figure out what f is at all of those points, and my formula for f was 4x minus y plus 5z. So f is equal to 4 times x minus y plus 5 times z which is equal to 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. f is equal to 4 times x minus y plus 5 times z, which is 20 plus 10, which is 30. f is equal to 4 times x minus y plus 5 times z, which is 8 plus 25 which is 33. F is equal to 4 times 7 minus Y plus 5 times Z, which is 28. F is equal to 4 times X minus Y plus 5 times Z, which is 17. And finally, f is equal to 4 times x, which is 0, minus y, plus 5 times z. So that's minus 7. So we wanted to maximize f, so therefore f is maximized here. So our final statement is the maximum... value of f is 33, which occurs when x 
is equal to 2, y is equal to 0, and z is equal to... And that's the end of the problem.